Alrighty y'all, today we're taking a break from the drive shaft video. A header video. Now this is a paste setter header. I will insert the part number right here. You'll see it now. Um, the issue with it is they say it fits a 4x4 but it doesn't. And the main issue is that this tube right here, the tube for cylinder 1, and it comes all the way along here is in the way and I've got to clamp down the table here you can see trying to put the drive shaft in and beating on it right here and now what we're gonna do is originally I thought I was going to cut out pretty much this whole section and lift it like lift the collector up but I got a better idea we are going to notch out all of this and simply bend this up an inch and a half to two inches. That's going to be what will give us the clearance to get it to clear the drive shaft. So you can see I've already had it in the truck. The truck was already running with it on. Um, eventually I'm going to header wrap them so that in itself will void the warranty. So yeah, fun fact. Pace setter headers, warranty voided if you wrap them, if you do a header wrap. Um, warranty is already voided, so I've welded to them. Warranty is going to be voided further, because I'm cutting them practically in half. So yeah, this is what you gotta do to get your long tube headers from Pace Setter to fit your second gen Dodge Ram half ton and three quarter ton gas jobs. This is the long tube, the big boys. So again, we're going to cut it here, and so I'm going to get a measure right in here, beyond just what my fingers measures, to see what we're currently sitting at, and then see how, and then we'll see how much cutting we have to do to make it all work. So we grab ourselves a tape measure. It's one of them auto locking ones, which would be nice. And currently we are sitting at here, sitting at two inches from the table, roughly. So we're gonna pretty much move a whole pipe width up. Is what we're gonna wind up doing here. Just gotta think for this. Come up. I wanna be cutting across here, across this plane, I guess. So, wish me luck, I'm mildly scared, but long tube headers and 4x4 apparently don't mix on these. My 4th gen was fine! Go back, watch that video. But the 2nd gen, not so much. Alrighty, so after way too much messing around, finally got a cut. One issue, because we are coming up at an angle, is nothing wants to line up right. We are all hinging off of that cylinder number one tube here. And it's just barely hanging on. Um, yeah. My fit on this was absolutely horrible. But, you know what we're gonna do? We're going to pull this tube up, and pull this tube up. So we may have to uh, put a little bit of a cut here as well. I'm actually have to completely cut out this tube. Up here would probably be the easiest point, because then I can get around it nicely to weld it back in. So this has also got to come up a fair ways. I can stick my finger in there to get it to come up. But I can also manually yank it up. So I'll just do a little bit of heaving and hoeing and see where we go. Alrighty, so we've just been welding away here. Um, of course, the alignment is kind of crappy, so it's going to lose a little bit of performance out of that. But she's got a cam in her, so it don't matter. So you can see I still got to pull this one over. But for the most part, it is all... This one, the alignment kind of sucks on as well. I haven't touched that bottom one yet either. You can see there's some of that crappy alignment. 
but just because this wall is pretty thin shit, I mean, it's not horrible. And I could turn the welder down more, but I'm just, you know, letting my, uh, my auto hood here. From Princess Auto, letting it fade out and reset to normal, not welding mode. And then I give it another tack, and it's just how I've got it set. That I've kind of got that timing down right. But, that's what that's, so I'm just gonna keep going here. Gonna get this, uh, this bottom pipe pulled up and out a little bit. And then and get that other side done as well. I'm expecting to have a fairly large gap right here to fill. But there's little scraps and bits and I'll figure it out. What the fuck I do? I figure shit out. So, I'm gonna get back to welding. And I'll check in soon. Alrighty. So we're still working our butt off out here. We got her all welded up there. You see, I just uh, did the good old certified gap weld filler right there. Um, over here, I just took uh, this exactly this piece and I tacked it here and then I bent it over there and I tacked it there and tacked it there and then just wiggle, 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 broke her off to get that offset there. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna fill in at the bottom there first. So that way I can still get down in there. And then slowly uh, build up through here, kind of using that same method and working it almost like a TIG rod where I'm feeding it not completely into the puddle where I'm just going to tack it and then weld and then kind of bend it along. But it would probably fit pretty well and eh, not completely well in there. But either way, we're just going to build this whole pipe back up now. And then we can maybe header wrap it and hide this monstrosity and then stuff this bad boy back in the truck. Kind of sort of half ass push the, uh, the exhaust back on it. Charge the battery. Install the front drive shaft and then to go. So this Alrighty, so I'm just making the ending to this video because apparently I forgot to do that at the shop. You can kind of hear my supper deep frying in the background because I'm super healthy. Um, but either way, thank you TMR Custom and hashtag Team Amsoil. Amsoil, you're the best. I hope that care package arrives soon. Um, I do have the header in. Drive shaft is on. Truck has drove. I slightly overdid it on the uh, adjusting of the header. I didn't show it, but I moved it like an inch and three quarter. Inch and a half would have been plenty. Inch and three eighths probably would have been best because I forgot to measure. That was on me. I had to remove the starter to get it to go in. Um, yeah, because that got in the way. You almost have to remove the brake booster to get it to go in or unbolt the engine and like tip it to the passenger side to get a little bit extra room. It's a really tight fit. It was a really tight fit before. That I would see to be the only reason why Pace Setter didn't do this. Do a better version of this from the factory. But either way, ending it off here now. So subscribe, comment, hit the like button, and as always, keep it killer.